morning, church family. Today is the first day of spring. Yay! <laughs> Lamentations 3, 22 and 23. It is of the Lord's mercies that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning. Great is thy faithfulness. He woke us up this morning. He clothed us in, a, in our right mind. There's air in our lungs. There's movement in our limbs. We have no reason not to show praise and adoration to our Lord each and every day. So please get up and sing with us as we honor our Lord and Savior. family, those who are visiting us at home online, good morning to you also. 
again, this is a, the day the Lord has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. We, as our sister said, we, we're, we're glad that this is, this is spring, but again, all, all of it's God's, and uh, the winter was okay, too. <laughs> I, I look at these other states and some of the things they're going through, and I am glad I am Michigan. <laughs> it's all right. It's four seasons in one week, that's all right. This is our time when we want to welcome those who are visiting uh, with us. So any first time visitors that are in the sanctuary, could you please stand? At home, you don't have to stand. But <laughs> first time visitors in the sanctuary, if there are any, could you please stand? All right. If there are any at home, who, oh, very, very good. We do have one. Well, welcome to Bible Baptist. If you're looking for a church home, you don't have to look any further. You found it. The truth is preached here, and the people here love. So you, you, have, you need to look no further. Amen. Welcome. We have Sunday school, or school of the Bible, at 9 o'clock in the morning. And it, it, you can really get into it. The pastor uh, ministers to, uh, from the, um, the book we're currently uh, reading, Daniel, one week. And then the next week, you get to ask questions, anything you didn't understand, or anything you need further on. So come, come to School of the Bible, and you can grow. But again, welcome. Welcome to Bible Baptist. And for those at home, uh, welcome. Thank you. Good morning, family. I, too, would like to say welcome this morning. It's so good to see you, and, of course, all the family and uh, friends and guests that are visiting via live stream. Just a few announcements. Uh, this week we have uh, one anniversary to acknowledge, and that is uh, Doris and Deborah Chapman. They're celebrating 56 years of marriage. And so we thank God for them. I call your name. You were born in the month of March. Uh, Marlene Barron. Would you stand? Karen Blake, Tanya Bugs, Bryce Fields, Terry Fields, Imani Kelly, uh, Steve Larder, Mary Kay Larson, Tori Lavender, Heather Filbert Aponte, Joel Phillips, Sam Powell, Gonzalo Rodriguez, Janine Seisma, Julia Thompson, Nicole Waller, Deborah Watson, Lynette White, Blanche Wiley, Bruce Watering, Sandy Wood, and Fran Woodard. Any others in January, excuse me, in March? Would you please stand? All right, let's sing happy birthday to the family. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear family. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. And of course, as I was saying, if you feel so kind, pin a dollar on them today glue a quarter, whatever is in your budget just to celebrate. Amen. I'd like to let you know next week we will start our capital campaign prayer again. I know we're in this campaign uh, and it is important that we show faith by simply asking, seeking, knocking. And so we named the uh, roof, we named the heating and cooling, we named the parking lot. And all these things have been achieved by God's grace. And so we want to name this, we want to show God our faith. And so every fourth Sunday, right after service, just for a brief time, the capital campaign prayer. And then let's not forget on Lord willing, April the 15th, our Good Friday service here starting at noon. And uh, we are generally finished right at 1 o'clock. There are many who come for lunch, from lunch to uh, just honor this, uh, the death of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And uh, we also want to remind you on the 24th, we will begin our Community Connection Series. Our Community Connection Series. And so right after church, uh, we'd ask that you stay just a little while 
and you'll hear from Dr. Rita, who is the uh, superintendent of Kalamazoo Public Schools, and uh, we will uh, get an opportunity to ask questions and uh, also to hear the direction face-to-face -face with the community servant to Bible Baptist Church, and then on and on throughout the year, we will uh, use our community servants to have FaceTime with Bible Baptist Church and uh, just to do what the Bible says, you honor those to whom honors do. And then on May 1st, Sunday, May 1st, our training day. We haven't had this in a couple of years because of the uh, pandemic. Uh, but as you know, annually, May 1st, we'll have our fire drill. Uh, we'll have our medical drill. Uh, we'll also have our tornado drill. And uh, we'll have also... Uh, the dangerous uh, person in the church drill. And uh, then on Lord willing, the first Sunday in June, we return outdoors and the deacons have elected to have our church anniversary celebration outdoors. Lord willing, weather permitting. And so again, we ask that you plan to stay just a little bit longer for the outdoor service. We'll have a celebration, there'll be a meal. Lord willing, we'll have the grill going and just have a wonderful time uh, celebrating 54 years of uh, Bible Baptist Church. And then this week, it's so good to hear, I got two emails. One was from our children's church workers, children's church workers. We had children's church on Sunday, and so the committee is now saying we're ready to go. And so, uh, Lord willing, April the 16th, we'll have our first children's church. And then uh, we also got another email, the Awana Ministry, uh, kindergarten through high school. Uh, they're ready to go. And so, Lord willing, in September, uh, the Awana Ministry for all of the children, kindergarten all the way through high school, that ministry will be starting up again. And so it's just, it's just good to see the family starting to come back to worship service. It's good to see the ministry starting up again. And, uh, of course, we give God all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. And uh, we're also thankful for Sister Brenda uh, Watering. Is she here today? Brenda is here today. See, I thought I saw her. As you know, uh, Chef Watts, who uh, leads our culinary program for the after-school program, will be having surgery. And uh, we have another uh, great cook from the public schools who will be filling in. Uh, for Chef Watts for the balance of the school year. And so we're thankful for Sister Watering who has agreed to uh, step in and fill in for the culinary program uh, here at the church. These are all of my announcements. And so let's continue uh, our worship service with prayer. bow our head for a word of prayer. Our Father, Father of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, Lord, we thank you once again, Lord, for a day that we have never seen before and truly a day that we will never see again. We want to continue to thank you for our life, our health, our strength, and the use and activities of our limbs. Lord, we thank you for your grace and mercy that has brought us thus far. For that, we just want to say thank you, Lord. You woke us up this morning. You clothed us in our right minds. You put clothes on our backs. You put shoes on our feet, giving us a mind to come out to your house of worship just one more time, to sing Zion songs and praise your holy and righteous name, knowing that your name alone is worthy to be praised. You say your word from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same. Let everything that have breath praise the Lord. So, Lord, we thank you for being in this house of worship where we can worship you, where we can praise you. Lord, we can give all our adoration and all of our fears, Lord, all of our thoughts, Heavenly Father. Lord, we can give it to you. 
For you said in your word, Lord, that if we call upon you, you will show us great and mighty things which thou hast not known. You told us in your word, Lord, that if we humble ourselves under the mighty hand of God, that you may exalt us in due time. Lord, you said in your word, Lord, that if we cast all of our cares upon you, for you care for us. So, Lord, we thank you for keeping us, Lord. We thank you for holding us. That if it had not been for you who was on our side, our enemies would have swallowed us up a long time ago. So, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Lord, you said in your word, Lord, that I have waited patiently for the Lord. And he inclined unto me. He heard my cry. He brought me up also out of that horrible pit. Out of that miry clay. Set my feet upon a rock. And established my going. He put a new song in my mouth. Even praise unto our God. It said many shall see it in fear. And shall trust in the Lord. So we come to you with a bowed down head and a heavy heart, asking you to have mercy on our much needed souls. Lord, when you told us to go left, we went right. Lord, when you told us to look up, we looked down. Lord, we thank you, Lord, that you said in your word that we confess our sins. You are faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and to cleanse us from all unrighteousness. Lord, we thank you, Heavenly Father. Lord, we ask that you create in us the clean heart, O God, and renew within us the right spirit. Cast us not away from thy presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from us, but restore unto us the joy of thy salvation, and hold us with thy free spirit. Then we be able to teach transgressors thy ways, and sinners shall be converted unto you, Lord. So we thank you, even now, Heavenly Father, from keeping us from seen and unseen danger, for laying us down last night, Lord, and touching us with your finger of love, Lord, we just want to say thank you. Thank you for this church family at large. Help us to continue to get involved in ministry, Lord. Not only inside of this church, Lord, but also outside, Heavenly Father. Help us to show, Lord, and teach people about the gospel of Jesus Christ, Heavenly Father. The one who hung and bled on the cross of Calvary for our sins. The one who was buried and got up on the third day with all power. Heaven and earth is in your hands, Lord. And with that same power, Heavenly Father, you gave us love. You gave us joy. You gave us peace. You gave us faith. You gave us gentleness. You gave us meekness. You gave us everything pertaining to life and godliness. Lord, we thank you that we lack nothing, Heavenly Father. So help us to use those things, Lord, in our everyday life. Lord, we come praying for our pastor, Pastor Lava, to continue to strengthen him where he is weak. Build him up where he is torn down. Prop him up on every lean inside, Heavenly Father. Continue to help him to teach and preach your word, Lord. Lord, we thank you, Lord. Oh, we praise you, Heavenly Father, just for who you are, Lord. We don't even want anything from you, Lord. We just, we just, we just want to be with you, Lord. So, Lord, if anybody don't know you in the free part of their sins, Lord, may this be the day of salvation. So, Lord, we love you, we praise you, we thank you, we lift you up. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. amen. We want to sing, My God is Real. Number 249 in your hymnals. Hymn number 249, My God is Real. Would you stand with me? We're going to sing all three verses.
like you mean it. Yes, God is real, real in my soul. Yes, God is real, for he has watched and made me whole. His love for me is like pure gold. Yes, God is real, for I can feel him in my soul. I cannot tell. so good to see our daughter Lauren Pruitt in the house this morning. Would you stand up, Lauren, please? Lauren. And uh, amen. Amen. Lauren and her fiance Wes did an amazing job in the marriage counseling. And uh, so on July 1st, uh, they will be coming together in holy matrimony. And I'll have, Lord willing, the privilege to be able to officiate that service. So God bless you. It's good to see you. Also on uh, March 25th, March 25th, Friday, March 25th, the Kalamazoo Gospel Mission will have a dedication service and open house and touring of their brand new facility. And so they're encouraging uh, everyone to come out and to participate. Uh, you have a personal, personal invitation from uh, Pastor uh, Brown. Uh, he wants us to know that we are all invited and uh, he wants us to be there. Uh, we're blessed, if you remember several months ago, I talked about two of our members who were recognized as servants down at that gospel mission who are doing a wonderful job, and that is Lorenzo Herbert and Ryan Jones. And so we're so thankful to have them uh, representing. And so let's make sure that if you're available again, Friday, 9 o'clock, Kalamazoo Gospel Mission, dedication, and also a touring of the new facility. Let's take our Bibles this morning and let's turn to the Gospel of John. The Gospel of John, chapter 3, and we want to continue our March focus. Our focus for March is ministry purpose, ministry purpose, lessons from the life of John the Baptist, ministry purpose, lessons from the life of John the Baptist. Follow on with me. John's Gospel, chapter 3. I'm going to read verse 28 and 29 into your hearing. Ye yourselves bear me witness that I said I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoices greatly, 
because of the bridegroom's voice. This, my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. I believe these lessons in the life of John the Baptist, just to help us to think through this section, there are five P's. We look at, first of all, the place of ministry, the plan of ministry, the person of ministry, the position of ministry, and the permanence of ministry. I believe personally that we have lost our way, we have lost our purpose for ministry. That through all that has happened in these last two years, many are describing that I feel like I'm a leaf in the wind. I feel like I am a ship at sea without a rudder. I'm I'm feeling, Pastor, as if I am the hamster on the wheel. I am I am I'm moving. I have movement in my life, but I don't feel like I'm making any progress. And so it's with those feelings that John will serve uh, as a lesson for all of us to once again re-engage in ministry, as Minister Sim said, not only in the church, but also outside of the church, I have to answer the question and review it. Why am I here? Where did I come from? And what should I be doing? Why am I here? Where did I come from? And what should I be doing? Well, certainly, as we sit here this morning, we have to engage and be about ministry purpose. God has created us for his pleasure, and uh, it is God's will that we obey and we do, even Jesus. I came into this world not to do mine own will, but the will of the Father, and so he teaches us and he shows us. But so does John the Baptist. He's an example. We saw, first of all, the place of ministry. John, before the foundation of the world, before he was in his mother's womb, that he was to come forth and the place, contextually, he is in the place of the Jordan and he is baptizing the same time that Jesus is baptizing. And the text says it was before John was cast into prison. And so the particular place of ministry that I am in this particular place, Jesus is in this place, we are baptizing and uh, we are doing it for the reasons of purification. You and I are here for this place and this time that God has raised you up that he has brought you through your mother's womb, as the 139th Psalm tells us, I am distinctly and uniquely made. And as Mordecai said to Esther, how do you know that God did not raise you up for the kingdom for this time? That it is no mistake that you have been brought from different places, that many have come from different countries, you have come from different cities, And you arrive here, we are in Kalamazoo, Michigan, we are part of Bible Baptist Church, and here we are to do ministry right now. God has drawn us to himself in salvation. That coming to God has a plan all the way back from eternity for whom he foreknew, them he also predestinated. Whom he predestinated, them he also called. Whom he called, them he also justified. Whom he justified, them he also glorified. It is a plan from eternity past all the way into eternity future that this moment in time God has drawn you to himself, giving you a gift of ministry for the reasons of exercising that ministry within the body of Christ. That's a plan. That's a place. And John shows us that. Also, it comes with a plan. He says in 
Verse 27, John answered and said, A man can receive nothing except to be given him from heaven. That God is the one in his plan that has given the ministry of the church to go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature for the purposes of edification, to build up the saints, that we need to be uh, inwardly focused and, and outwardly driven that, that you and I, we, we are here within the body, but, but the ministry is outwardly. And God has given that plan of salvation and the message of the gospel. The only message that will save a person's soul, the only message that reduces the population of hell. God gave that message to the church of Jesus Christ. That's a plan. But we don't stop here with the place and the plan. There's also the person of ministry. And that person is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Verse 28 and 29, ye yourselves bear me witness that I said, I am not the Christ, but that I am sent before him. He that hath the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom, which standeth and heareth him, rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. This my joy, therefore, is fulfilled. John says that my ministry was before him. In chapter 3, when John is asked questions from the Jewish leadership, he says, and he just simply pointed to the one coming after him. He says, I am before him, but my ministry is all about pointing to the one who's coming behind me. Ministry is all about Jesus. Ministry is all about Jesus. He says that in the wedding ceremony, it is only the bridegroom that has the bride. I recognize my role. I know the person. That the person is all about the bridegroom. And that's our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. I am only a friend of the bridegroom. But I stand to hear his voice. I stand to hear his word. And it is in the hearing of his voice the hearing of his words, that I can rejoice, it is in that that my joy is fulfilled. John the Baptist understood that ministry is all about the person, and that person is none other than Jesus Christ. The prophecies that come from Isaiah 40, the prophecies that come from Malachi 3, they simply point to the person that all you are is you're going to be the forerunner. Your role is to really point to the person, and that person is Jesus Christ. You were born six months ahead of him, but your role is to point to the one that's coming behind you. In this, he says, that you are focused upon the person of ministry, and that person is none other than our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It is all about lifting up the name of Jesus. In verses 14 through 16 of chapter 3 of the Gospel of John, Jesus is talking about the event of the plague in the book of Numbers. And God told Moses to put a serpent upon the pole. Our own medical ministry symbol is also characteristic of this healing event the serpent upon the pole and Moses would raise up that serpent on the pole and everyone that looked in faith was healed Jesus says in John's gospel chapter 3 verse 14 and as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness even so must the son of man be lifted up that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It is all about lifting up the name of Jesus. Jesus says, if I, if I be lifted up from the earth, I will draw all men unto himself. 
So it is all about Jesus. Jesus is all about ministry. And ministry is all about Jesus. Even the Holy Spirit of God, the Comforter who would come, the third person of the Trinity. In John's Gospel, chapter 15 and verse 26, Jesus says that when he comes, he will testify of me. In chapter 16 of John, in verse 13, Jesus says that he, that is the Spirit of God, he will not even speak of himself. But he will say those things to glorify me. And that's why when people, it is interesting, who are full of the Spirit of God, oftentimes you can tell if it's really the Spirit of God. Because the Spirit of God will never draw attention to the individual. It is the Spirit of God that will always glorify and lift up the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Jesus says that when the Spirit of God comes, he's not even going to speak of himself. He's going to glorify me. And so ministry is all about Jesus. Paul the Apostle said in Philippians and when he gives his resume and all that he's achieved in life he says I count all of this as loss for the excellency of the knowledge of Jesus Christ that Paul says that that is the number one pursuit it is all about Jesus Jesus even in calling us to discipleship he tells us that when he spells out in Luke's gospel and chapter 14 about discipleship and he uses the word hate but hate not in the sense of disliking but hatred in the sense of loving these individuals more than Jesus Christ he says that if you don't hate who he says your parents your spouse your children your siblings, and even your own self. Why? Because Jesus is first. Ministry is all about Jesus, and Jesus is all about ministry. The Apostle Paul reminds us of this call to discipleship, that when I am going to follow Jesus, then therefore my parents can't be before Jesus. My spouse can't be before Jesus my children can't be my siblings and I can't be before him he says I have to deny myself take up my cross and follow Jesus John teaches us this lesson as Paul says that it is in Jesus that he must have the preeminence he needs to be first he needs to be foremost foremost and he needs to be first in ministry it is all about him the moment I think it's about me the moment I think it's about the church the moment I think it's about the pastor or the leaders then we lose sight of ministry and we will lose our purpose but as long as we understand that my whole purpose for ministry is to point to the one Jesus the whole point of ministry is to lift up the name of Jesus. Then he says, all men will be drawn unto himself. Not only does John in Lessons in John teach us about the place of ministry, the plan of ministry, the person of ministry, but also the position of ministry. Look at verses 30 and 31, the position of ministry. He must increase, but I must decrease. He that cometh from above is above all. He that is of the earth is earthly and speaketh of the earth. He that cometh from heaven is above all. John understood the position. And in order for me to have ministry and maintain ministry purpose, I have to understand 
what my position is. My position. John uses two words, decrease and increase. In order for something to decrease, that simply means to lessen. To decrease means to, to lower or, or to go down. So when I'm thinking, when he says that, that he must increase and, and I must increase, that, that I recognize my role in the ministry, but, but the more I'm in ministry, what should be happening is that, that my life and myself should be decreasing and, and Christ should be increasing. And that simply means to, to become greater, to become greater. You know, we've had to be so creative in these last couple of years. Uh, we've gotten to a place with my bride and I into uh, traveling, uh, but we decided uh, these last two years that uh, we were not going to do much travel. And so we've had to be creative in the celebration of our, of our anniversaries. And so uh, we, we've been trying to do some first, some first things. Uh, two years ago, we were celebrating, and I had never been uh, uh, camping, I realized that what I've been doing was glamping. So I thought camping was getting a cabin, you see, and lights and all this kind of stuff. That's, 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 that's glamping. But camping is when you're going to get out there, you know, nothing, you're going to build this tent, and you're going to... So, so we experienced that, and it was a glorious, glorious weekend. Last year we decided that we're going to do something different now. We're going to do a, a hot air balloon ride. That's what we're going to do. And uh, the wonderful thing is that they let you participate in that. So we're waiting, and I'm thinking. We're both a little nervous, you see, and uh, you know, make sure we prayed up and all these kind of things. But, but we see this, this, this small van pull up with this trailer. And I'm thinking to myself, where's the rest of it? Because the van is not this, this trailer is not that huge. But in, the, in, in this trailer is, is this balloon. And so we get to help and, and take it out. And, and uh, my wife and I get the privilege of holding it as it's being filled up. And, 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 and the more it increases with, with air, the, 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 the higher it goes. And then what was simply in this small little trailer just becomes greater and greater and greater and greater. Now... Now, I reserve the balloon for eight people, but, but, but I'm trying to get my romance on. So I rented the whole balloon just for Marianne and I. And of course, we got the pilot, but just the two of us. And uh, so they fill this up, and we get in the basket, and then they, they keep filling it up. And the more they filled it up, the bigger it got the higher it went. I mean, we're all over 131, and then they tell us, now, we don't know where we're going to land. That's the land crew you see keep driving around. Because we don't know where we're going to land. And I'm thinking, you should have told us that <laughs> in the beginning, Okay. So we're flying over, and he said, you know, we're going to touch down in the neighborhood. And so it began to, to decrease in air, and certainly we touched down in this neighborhood. Before he did, he asked my wife, you want to touch, take a leaf off the top of the tree? So he went, and he, he took a leaf off the top of the tree, and, and he touched down in the neighborhood. All the kids started running towards the balloon, and so he filled it back up again. We went back up in the air again. And then he says, I think we're going we're gonna to go into this parking lot on Westnage, and that's where we'll, we'll, we'll land. And sure enough, it began to decrease in the, in the air, and, 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 and sure enough, it went down, and finally we landed. We got out the basket, and then it deflated, and we rolled it up. We participated, and we put it back in a small little trip. What a beautiful picture of what John says. John is saying that 
in order to maintain ministry purpose, then, then, then I have to decrease. I have to decrease. I, I, I've got to become smaller and smaller in the scheme of this. And at the same time that I'm getting smaller and smaller, Lord, you are becoming greater and greater and greater. You see, you're becoming greater and greater, and I'm, I'm decreasing because I am of the earth. And yet you are from above. And because you are from above, and you are thinking and you're speaking of heavenly things, I am of the earth and I'm thinking earthly. And ministry can't be about the earthly things. It has to be about heavenly things. And so, Lord, help me to deflate myself so that you can fill up. And you, in my mind, should be higher and higher and higher. You should be rising more and more and more. You should be increasing. At the same time, I am decreasing. The text says Jesus is far above principalities and powers and, and rulers and dominions, not only in this life, but in the life to come. I'm finding that I have to be careful of what Paul says in Romans 12, that, that I can begin to think more highly of myself then I ought to think. I can get to the point where Paul says that, that I, can, I can have an inflated mind. I will be puffed up in my thinking of, of who I am. So God wants me to stay in this place of decreasing. I lead someone to Christ and I'm the disciple, but guess what? I'm discipleship, but, but my goal is not to, to become, for you to become what I am. You are to become what Jesus is. The same thing about ministry. That it's all about him. He is, he is the one who's increasing. I need to have the mind of Jesus that he thought it not robbery to be equal with God. He made himself of no reputation. He took on the form of servanthood. That's the mind that I need to have. I need to remember that God resists the proud. But he gives grace unto the humble. John says that he must increase. I must decrease. Pride will destroy your ministry. Pride will destroy your marriage. Pride goeth before the fall. Look at the fall of anything. You'll see that, that, that pride has went before this. That in order for me to, to keep decreasing, decreasing, that, that I am relinquishing my own will for the will of God. And Jesus is the example of that. If I look at you and you look at me, we'll all be able to see some things that I can do better than you and you can do better than me, that I'm, I'm more proficient than you in some things and, and you're more proficient than I am in some things and, and we'll keep comparing ourselves with ourselves. And what will happen is, I will keep increasing in my own mind of myself. Only to realize that Paul says that you're not the measure of the stature. I am the measure of the stature. And so, no matter what you're proficient in, or no matter what I'm proficient in, when you compare yourself to Jesus, when I compare myself to Jesus, now we're thinking right of ourselves. Now we begin to understand the whole importance of, 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 of decreasing. Decreasing. So that Christ can increase. 
I understand this whole idea about thinking of yourself and, and, and having courage of yourself and all of these examples of, of what we do to build up ourselves. But Christ is the one who should always be increasing. I need to be asking myself, am I looking more like Christ than myself? Is the ministry more like Christ than self? That's the difference between the church and a cult. The cults simply all look like the leader. I know from experience. I ran from a cult in New York City. Didn't know some finances came to Carver Bible College. We're so happy to get the funds. The president said, someone wants to give you a scholarship. The only requirement is you have to spend a summer in New York City. Mary and I are dating at the time, and so I go up to New York City and to this place, this house filled with these students from all over. And I'm noticing some things, but you know, you, you, you want the best. You, 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 it can't be, I can look beyond this, you see. And more and more things were happening. The leader of the house, he would come, and you know, I'm so used to, you know, just asking blessing and eating. But I get it, if we all will eat together, let's just wait on everybody. That's, that's fine, no problem. He said, you gotta wait on, on the leader. Leader came and sat down. I noticed he picked up his fork. Everybody picked up their fork and we went. He ate his peas. Everybody ate their peas. He went to his mashed potatoes. They went to theirs. He did, it, it, everything was with him. And I thought, well, maybe they like peas and mashed potatoes. You know. And more and more and more and more and more. Then I'm realizing what this is. This is a cult. So I said, I'm leaving. He said, you ain't going nowhere. So what do you do in a situation like that? What does a strong man do in a situation like that? I called my mom on the phone. <laughs> I said, Mom. Got to get out of here. I called my brother, and my brother said, man, whatever you can, get out of there. He said, we ain't taking you nowhere. If you leave, you're going to leave on your own. I got two trunks, and I'm walking Broad Street in New York City at night going to the bus station. No money. I said, God, you got to help me. He gave me the strength to make it. He gave me the strength. Marianne sent me a ticket. They said, we don't have any buses leaving until tomorrow morning. I just said, Lord, help me. All of a sudden, this bus driver came out. He said, did I hear you going to Cleveland? I said, yes. He said, could you do me a favor? He said, I'm deadheading. I got to take this bus back to Cleveland. Could you ride with me just to say? I'm thinking, wow, wow. But I realized the experience. Two of the students from Carver, we never heard from again. One of them we found later, his mind was messed up. He was just, it was terrible. That's not what the church is, though. It's not the goal of the church for the people. As Paul said, you only follow me as I follow Christ. It's not the goal of the church for everybody to look like the pastor or to look like some strong person within the congregation or some strong female in the congregation and everybody patterns. Now, we, you might be examples, but that's not what this is. We have one head of the church, 
and that's the Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. He is our Lord and Savior. He loves us more than anybody does. He has sacrificed more than anybody has. And John says that if I'm going to have ministry purpose, then he must increase. And I must decrease. He's the measure. Of the stature. Now one day, I will look like him. It does not yet appear what I should be. As Dr. E.V. Hill said that, I'm a child of God. I may not look like it now, but I am. And one day, when he appears, I'm going to look just like him. But right now, he has began a good work in me. He is performing that work in me. And he's going to complete the work in me. Amen. You're not finished yet. I'm not finished yet. You're not looking at the finished product yet. But we should be looking more like him every day. He's the measure of the statue. Father, we thank you so much for Lessons in the life of John the Baptist. In order to maintain ministry purpose, then I have to remember the person of ministry. It's all about Jesus. It's all about lifting up your name. It's all about pointing people to Jesus. But you said even when the comforter comes, he's not going to speak of himself. He's going to glorify me. So spirit-led and spirit-filled, spirit-directed ministry will always glorify Jesus if it's spirit-led. Any ministry through the Spirit, through the power, through the unction of the Spirit of God will always be about Jesus. Paul says, I desire to know nothing among you, saving Jesus, Christ crucified. But also in order for me to maintain ministry purpose, I have to know my position. That's one of humility. You want to do a work in me. And so I need to be humble. I need to be a base. I need to decrease. And you should increase. And so help me not to think more highly of myself than I ought to think. Help me not to compare myself with others. And I'm sure I can find something I do better, and there will be someone who can do it better than I can. But when we all look at Jesus, he's the real measure of the statue. Help me to understand you resist the proud. You give grace to the humble. So help me in my, my marriage. Help me with my children, my grandchildren. Help me with my brothers and sisters. Help me with my friends. Help me in my presentation to to remember you must increase I must decrease help this preacher help my family help us all in Jesus name while every head is bowed and every eye closed 
There might be someone here today. You've never, ever trusted the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior. I'm here to tell you that God loves you. He sent Jesus to die for you. He that hath the Son hath life. He that hath not the Son hath not life. God loves you. He sent Jesus to die for you. All you have to do is say, Lord, I'm a sinner. I believe you died for my sins. You were buried. You rose again the third day. Come into my life and save me. God desires that none perish, but that all would come to repentance. Father, please save the soul searching for you today. Or maybe you're here, you're without a church home. You you know the Lord, you would like to be part of our family, we invite you to come. Or maybe you're someone who has heard the word of God today, and you're standing in the need of prayer. There's an area of your life you want someone to pray with you about. We have prayer warriors that will pray with you today. Let's all stand as we sing together. again from the dead, our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, through the blood of the everlasting covenant, make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever, and the people of God said, amen. Amen. God bless you.